Do you feel like you don't speak enough Swedish? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Today, we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. 
Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Want to speak real Swedish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwedishPod101.com. Elin. Hi everybody, I'm Elin. Welcome to SwedishPod101.com's Svenska på tre minuter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swedish. In the last lesson we learned the phrase Ursäkta mig, kan du tala engelska? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Ursäkta mig, which means excuse me in Swedish. In this lesson we're going to learn how to use Ursäkta mig in other words, when apologizing in Swedish. We use ursäkta mig in formal situations, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, ursäkta mig, en kaffe tack. Excuse me, a coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. Ursäkta mig, var är toaletten? Excuse me, where is the toilet? The common way to say excuse me is ursäkta mig. Ursäkta mig. Just like ursäkta mig, we can use förlåt when apologizing for an action. Förlåt means I'm sorry. Förlåt. You can also hear some Swedes say sorry, which is a loan word from English, and it's often used as a quick apology amongst friends. Both of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. 
But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use the word förlåt. The phrase förlåt, jag är jätteledsen för det, means I'm really sorry about that. This can be used in both formal and informal situations. Förlåt, jag är jätteledsen för det. First we have the familiar förlåt. Next we insert the Swedish pronoun for I, jag. Then är, which means am. Followed by ledsen, which means sad. Again, you can see the use of the word jätte in front of an adjective, just like in lesson two. Finally, we have the phrase för det, meaning about that. Förlåt, jag är jätteledsen för det. Now it's time for Elin's insights. In Sweden, if you accidentally bump into someone, you might not get any response. But to be polite, we either say, ursäkta mig, or förlåt. You can also use these phrases when you want to say, sorry, can you repeat what you just said? Are you able to count in Swedish? In the next lesson, we learn the numbers in Swedish from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next Svenska på 3 minuter lesson. Vi ses nästa gång! Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining, no bad news, but you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much, and this affects your mood and motivation, so you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. 
If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement. And it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress, and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording, if you're brave. Like and share this video, and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time, bye. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how, with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up, so your goals need to be measurable. A 
stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. 
register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher, watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Welcome to SwedishPod101.com's Svenska på tre minuter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swedish. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Hi, I'm Elin. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Swedish expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swedish. There are only two sentences you need. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Hi, I'm Elin. Nice to meet you. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Start by saying, hej, jag heter. Then say your name. Hej, jag heter Elin. Finally say, trevligt att träffas. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. And now let's see the same sentence in a different format. Hallå, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Hello, Elin. Nice to meet you. Hallå, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. So, what a change from the previous introduction. Let's take a close look at these together. Hey has been substituted with an alternative greeting. Hallå. Swedish for hello. Jag heter Elin has been shortened to just Elin. In this sentence, it's implied that I am introducing myself as Elin. In a formal setting, you would say your full name. One more time. 
One way to introduce yourself in Swedish is Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. An alternative way to introduce yourself is Hallå, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Now it's time for Elin's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Sweden. It's more common to use Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. When you introduce yourself once. In front of a group of people or one single person. If you greet several people individually, you use the short phrase Hej, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Do you know how to say thank you in Swedish? You'll learn how to say this and many other words in the next Svenska på tre minuter lesson. Tack, vi ses då. See you then. How was your day? Hur var din dag? Hur var din dag? Where is everyone? Var är alla? Var är alla? What's for dinner? Vad blir det för mat? Vad blir det för mat? Call me if you need anything. Ring mig om du behöver något. Ring mig om du behöver något. I'll be back tonight. Jag kommer tillbaka ikväll. Jag kommer tillbaka ikväll. Do you need anything? Behöver du något? Behöver du något? I'm leaving now. Jag går nu. Jag går nu. The TV isn't working. TVn fungerar inte. TVn fungerar inte. There's no toilet paper. Det finns inget toalettpapper. Det finns inget toalettpapper. What time is breakfast? Vilken tid är frukost? Vilken tid är frukost? Do you have a reservation? Har du reserverat? Har du reserverat? I have a reservation. Jag har reserverat. Jag har reserverat. How many people? Hur många personer? Hur många personer? It's only Tuesday. Det är bara tisdag. Det är bara tisdag. Today is Wednesday. Idag är det onsdag. Idag är det onsdag. It's already Sunday. Det är redan söndag. Det är redan söndag. Monday is the worst day of the week. Måndag är den värsta dagen på veckan. Måndag är den värsta dagen på veckan. What day is it today? Vad är det för dag idag? Vad är det för dag idag? The day after tomorrow is Friday. I övermorgon är det fredag. I övermorgon är det fredag. It ends in 30 minutes. Det slutar om 30 minuter. Det slutar om 30 minuter. She'll be here by 7 p.m. Hon kommer att vara här vid 19.00. Hon kommer att vara här vid 19.00. The flight will arrive at 8.45 p.m. Flyget kommer att anlända kvart i nio på kvällen. Flyget kommer att anlända kvart i nio på kvällen. It looks like it will take about 30 more minutes to get there. Det ser ut som om det kommer ta ungefär 30 minuter extra att komma dit. Det ser ut som om det kommer ta ungefär 30 minuter extra att komma dit. We'll arrive 30 minutes early. Vi anländer 30 minuter tidigt. Vi anländer 30 minuter tidigt. He's leaving now. Han går nu. Han går nu. Let's leave in 20 minutes. Vi åker om 20 minuter. Vi åker om 20 minuter. Can we leave around 6? Kan vi åka runt sex? 
Kan vi åka runt sex? Be here before noon. Var här innan tolv på dagen. Var här innan tolv på dagen. It's almost dusk. Det är nästan skymning. Det är nästan skymning. It's midnight. Det är midnatt. Det är midnatt. It's noon. Klockan är prick tolv. Klockan är prick tolv. It's three o'clock. Klockan är tre. Klockan är tre. What is a good time for you? Vad är en bra tid för dig? Vad är en bra tid för dig? Have you done this before? Har du gjort det här förut? Har du gjort det här förut? What do you do in your spare time? Vad gör du på din fritid? Vad gör du på din fritid? What's your hobby? Vad är din hobby? Vad är din hobby? I play the guitar. Jag spelar gitarr. Jag spelar gitarr. I'm sorry for your loss. Jag är ledsen för din förlust. Jag är ledsen för din förlust. Congratulations. Grattis. Grattis. Please sit down. Varsågod och sitt. Varsågod och sitt. Come in. Kom in. Kom in. That was so thoughtful of you. Det var väldigt omtänksamt av dig. Det var väldigt omtänksamt av dig. You shouldn't have. Du skulle inte ha. Du skulle inte ha. Welcome. Välkommen. Välkommen. Do you have any kids? Har du några barn? Har du några barn? I'm American. Jag är amerikan. Jag är amerikan. Are you going on vacation? Ska du åka på semester? Ska du åka på semester? Do you have an appointment? Har du bokat tid? Har du bokat tid? I feel sick. Jag känner mig dålig. Jag känner mig dålig. I don't feel well. Jag mår inte så bra. Jag mår inte så bra. I think you can do it. Jag tror att du kan göra det. Jag tror att du kan göra det. Want to speak real Swedish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at swedishpod101.com. I'm sorry. Förlåt. Förlåt. Don't worry. Oroa dig inte. Oroa dig inte. It's okay. Det är okej. Det är okej. Please. Snälla. Snälla. Please forgive me. Snälla förlåt mig. Snälla förlåt mig. I really appreciate it. Jag uppskattar det verkligen. Jag uppskattar det verkligen. Thank you. Tack. Tack. You're welcome. Varsågod. Varsågod. Make yourself at home. Känn dig som hemma. Känn dig som hemma. Hello. Hej. Hej. Good morning. 
God morgon. God morgon. Goodbye. Hej då. Hej då. Long time no see. Det var länge sen. Det var länge sen. Good evening. God kväll. God kväll. Sorry to keep you waiting. Förlåt att du fick vänta. Förlåt att du fick vänta. Wait a moment. Ett ögonblick. Ett ögonblick. Hello? Hallå? Hallå? Really? På riktigt. På riktigt. Help. Hjälp. Hjälp. I don't like it. Jag tycker inte om det. Jag tycker inte om det. I like it. Jag tycker om det. Jag tycker om det. Delicious. Utsökt. Utsökt. Awesome. Balt. Balt. What is it? Vad är det? Vad är det? Where are you from? Vart kommer du ifrån? Vart kommer du ifrån? How old are you? Hur gammal är du? Hur gammal är du? What's your phone number? Vad har du för telefonnummer? Vad har du för telefonnummer? What time is it? Hur mycket är klockan? Hur mycket är klockan? This is for you. Det här är till dig. Det här är till dig. I'm good. Jag mår bra. Jag mår bra. How have you been? Hur har du haft det? Hur har du haft det? How are you? Hur mår du? Hur mår du? Nice to meet you. Trevligt att träffas. Trevligt att träffas. It's difficult. Det är svårt. Det är svårt. Once again, please. En gång till, tack. En gång till, tack. I don't understand. Jag förstår inte. Jag förstår inte. Slower, please. Långsammare, tack. Långsammare, tack. It takes about 30 minutes by train. Det tar ungefär 30 minuter med tåg. Det tar ungefär 30 minuter med tåg. I want a bottle of water. Jag vill ha en flaska vatten. Jag vill ha en flaska vatten. I live in Los Angeles. Jag bor i Los Angeles. Jag bor i Los Angeles. My vacation starts in two weeks. Min semester börjar om två veckor. Min semester börjar om två veckor. I've changed. Jag har förändrats. Jag har förändrats. I won't do it again. Jag gör inte om det. Jag gör inte om det. This weekend I'm going to the movies. Den här helgen ska jag på bio. Den här helgen ska jag på bio. What are you doing this weekend? Vad ska du göra den här helgen? 
Vad ska du göra den här helgen? I'll have time next week. Jag har tid nästa vecka. Jag har tid nästa vecka. I'm busy this week. Jag är upptagen den här veckan. Jag är upptagen den här veckan. Ready to start? Redo att börja? Redo att börja? You're handsome. Du är snygg. Du är snygg. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.